If you're new to this channel, you may consider subscribing and hit the bell icon so that you continue to receive the updates. Also, after watching this video, you may want to refer to some of the playlists that we have created for people who are interested in in-depth knowledge. These are the videos in the right sequence, which will give you thorough knowledge of the subject. Please share it with all others who might benefit. Let's get started. All right, so in this video, we continue to talk about the weight initialization. And what we've covered so far is what happens when all these weights are initialized equally. We took a specific case where between the input neurons and the hidden neurons, we chose one set of weights, which was all W1s. All these connections were W1s. And between the hidden neurons and the output neurons, we chose all the weights to W2s. And we were able to figure out that even when we backpropagate, while W2s may be updated, all these connections will be weighed equally. So it could be W2 prime, you may want to call it, but all these weights would be W2 primes. And similarly here, the W1s may get updated, let's say W1 primes, but all these connections would still continue to be W1 primes. And the problem is the symmetry breaking problem. In such cases, a large neural network with multiple neurons in the hidden layer could be compressed to a simple neural network like this. And this is just about as good as having one neuron. So this is what we did in our last tutorial. Now let's look at a specific instance of this scenario when the weights have been initialized equally, but the weights are all zeros. Then what happens? So once again, from the inputs, we'll do W1x1 plus W1x2 that gets aggregated here. Then it goes through an activation function and gives an output. Let's say we call it H. This output from the hidden layer along with these weights, and in this case, just one weight gets aggregated here, which is represented by Z, and we put it through an activation function. Finally, we get a predicted value, which is Y hat. So let's do this step by step now. So in the cases where W1s are zeros, you can imagine the aggregation here would be simply zero. And let's say if this G is ReLU, then we will be looking at max of zero and A, and max of zero and zero in this case, which will be again zero. So the output H that we'll get from this activation will again be zero. And when we do a multiplication of three times W2H, that aggregation here would again be zero. And let's say if F is a sigmoid neuron, because we are doing a binary classification, we can put this value here in the expression one over one plus E raised to the power minus C. Z is zero, so this becomes one. It is one by two. We'll be predicting Y hat as 0.5. And now if we try to go back to update W2, what happens? W2 new would be W2 old minus eta times dou L by dou W2. This dou L by dou W2 again can be written like this. And let's look at the value of dou Z by dou W2. If we take a derivative of Z with respect to W2, it will be 3H, but H is already zero. So this piece becomes zero. Now in this expression, if dou L by dou W2 is zero, it means W2 new is equal to W2 old. So when the weights are all initialized as zeros, the weights don't get updated at all in the first place. Let's look back at the first set of connections. This would be again W1 old minus eta times dou L by dou W1, a relatively longer expression. But again, in this case, a lot of these terms are zeros to begin with. So eventually, if we go about computing this, this again would turn out to be zero. And this becoming zero again suggests that W1 new is equal to W1 old. So two key takeaways. Don't initialize the weights as equal because that leads to a symmetry breaking problem in which we could reduce a complete hidden layer of neurons to one single neuron and we'll be just able to solve linear problems at best. Within the scenario of equal weights, initializing all the weights as zero is even worse because in that case, the weights don't get updated at all. Now there are two more additional considerations that we need to give for weight initialization. Let's have a look at the popular activation functions. So we have a sigmoid activation and the derivative of the sigmoid. We have the tan H and its derivative, the ReLU and its derivative. One important point to note in case of sigmoid and tan H, which is very clear is that if we attain very high or very low values, we face a problem of vanishing gradients. You can see the gradient varies up to a region and beyond that it goes flat, it's almost zero. ReLU also has this problem, but it has this problem in just the negative region. At least in the positive region, the gradient would never die. And what could lead to such high or such low values? It's the magnitude of weights. So an important takeaway is 
that too small and too large weights are not good because they would let us go to these extreme scenarios where the gradient would not be updated. If the gradient is not updated, the weights are not updated, and the purpose of neural networks gets speeded because they don't get to learn. In case of ReLU, we know that it never dies in the positive region, which is a positive. But if we initialize with very high weights, it could lead to very high gradients. And high gradients are also not supposed to be good because they will take a lot of time to converge and you may not easily be able to find the optimal result in case of neural network. So be it any activation, we prefer avoiding too small and too large weights. So this is a relatively simple example. Imagine if we had about 100 inputs. And even if at each input gives an output which is equal to 1, when all these 100 connections will be made here at any given hidden neuron, you can imagine the aggregation, the weighted sum could still be pretty high. And if the weights are negative, this aggregation could also be pretty low. Now what will happen? In either of the cases, if the weights add up to pretty high or they add up to pretty low, we know that we're not going to be learning anything new. The gradients will be almost close to zero or they will vanish. And that remains a problem. This remain a major issue while training the neural networks for a long, long time. So we know that weights are the parameters. We cannot pass them ourselves, but we can choose a method to initialize them. So during their quest to find the right weight initialization methods, the researchers realized that it would always depend on the number of neurons because the number of neurons that we have chosen at different layers determine the number of connections. And based on this, two popular recommendations that are mostly followed are given like this. So for a sigmoid or a tan H kind of an activation function, it is Xavier or Glorot initialization. It's essentially the name of the same person, the first name and the last name. What's suggested is that the weight should follow a normal distribution with mean zero and a standard deviation, which is given by the square root of two over number of inputs plus number of outputs. Inputs to a given layer and the outputs from that layer. In some cases, you will find this written as one over number of inputs as well. Both the variants are equally popular. Whereas for ReLU, the recommendation is popularly known as A initialization. And this suggests that the weight should follow a normal distribution with mean zero and standard deviation, which is a square root of two over number of inputs. So Hay initialization seems to work pretty well for the other variants of ReLU as well that we discussed when we discussed the activation functions. And the motivation behind this comes from the fact that we saw the cases when the weights were all same. When the weights were all same, we had a very inefficient neural network. All the hidden neurons could be compressed to one single neuron. So we don't want the weights to be one and the same, which means we don't want them to be constant. And if we don't want them to be constant, we want them to be varying. And when it comes to variation, if we are looking at the possibilities of distributions, obviously people explored the idea of normal distribution. And a typical normal distribution, we prefer it to be centered around zero, that will be the mean, and it will have some variance. Now, in this case, we are talking about the standard deviation, which is nothing but the square root of the variance. Now, these are heuristics. So these are the recommendations which people have tried and tested and they found them to be useful. Of course, there's a lot of deep maths behind it, but we don't have to necessarily get into it. We know that this works and in applied sense, it's very easy to apply. We don't have to really study normal distribution to be able to apply this. It's very easily applied when we do coding. Now it is observed that these suggestions work very well with deep neural networks when you have multiple hidden layers. But if you have relatively shallow neural networks, there are other variants of these initializations which are recommended. And what are those? So for a relatively shallow neural network, we can even follow a uniform distribution which ranges between negative of root six over number of inputs plus number of outputs to positive of the same quantity. So this works for tan H and sigmoid and similarly for ReLU and its variants, this form of uniform distribution works pretty well. In fact, some of these are used as default in most of the packages. So to sum it up in this tutorial, we talked about how we should not initialize the weights and some of the recommendations that we may want to work with while we are designing our neural networks. Hope this helps.